What follows is a sermon that I delivered on a Friday night at a Sabbath service. Please note, the recording was not made on the Sabbath. My friends, tonight is our monthly musical Shabbat. I have to admit that the name sticks a bit in my throat because I never want to imply that what the Chazan does every week with his voice is not music. Of course it is. But obviously what makes this Shabbat different from the other Shabbatot of the month is the inclusion of instrumental accompaniment. This has proven to be a popular service, and why not? The music adds energy and spirit, what we would call in Hebrew, ruach. But it is also not without detractors, so tonight I would like to speak to you about this very issue, the issue of instrumental music on Shabbat. Earlier in the service, you might have noted that we prayed the following words. Finger the lute, pluck the harp, and let the sound of the lyre rise up. Do you know what psalm that comes from? It's the psalm for Shabbat. Yes, indeed, instrumental music was part of the service in the ancient temple on Shabbat. In fact, an opening line used frequently in the psalms, Lam Natseach Mizmor David, is thought to be a cue for the leader of the instrumental music. So that being the case, why did traditional Judaism ban music for so many centuries, just as it is still banned in the Orthodox world today? In part, because of a principle that says what was permitted in the temple is forbidden outside of the temple, as a sign of mourning for its destruction. My friends, the second temple was destroyed nearly 2,000 years ago. No one here tonight came to shul thinking, let's go mourn for the destruction of the temple. I think after almost 2,000 years, it's okay if we cheer up a little bit. But that's not all. Before my shul in Florida allowed, as we do, certain instrumental accompaniment on Friday night, I used to dread being asked why music was not allowed on Shabbat. Usually the assumption was I would say that it's work to play the instruments. And there are those who do make that argument, but it's not really the reason for banning instruments. One of the main reasons was concern that one would carry the instrument into the synagogue from outside and thus violate the Torah's prohibition on carrying on Shabbat. Another concern was that a string might break on the instrument or some other damage occur to it, and the musician would fix it, thus violating the law against repairing things on Shabbat. Some would even include tuning the instrument as a form of repair forbidden on Shabbat. So when people understood the real issues, and when they understood that music did take place in the ancient temple, you can imagine the impact that had on some people's desire for a musical Shabbat. It certainly reinforced it. Interestingly, this is not a new issue. Halachic authorities in medieval France and Germany state that the Talmud's prohibition against instruments only applied in a time when people were skilled to fix the instruments. But today, instrument repair is the realm of specialists. Furthermore, a 13th century rabbi named Menachem Hamairi from France wrote that the great Nachmanides students played instruments on Shabbat. 
and many conservative Jews are surprised to learn that the conservative movement permitted the use of instrumental music on Shabbat as far back as 1958. What is so new to us at Shari Tefillah is really not so new to conservative Judaism. And so, my friends, our musical Shabbat is certainly a change for us, but it's not really as radical a change as one might think. Also, please consider the care with which we made this decision, limiting it only to Friday night and then once per month, and making sure that the musicianship is on a professional level so that it's worthy of being part of a synagogue service. I think we all felt the energy, the drive, the added spirit that it brings to our Shabbat service, how it helps us to fulfill the words of the psalmist, sing unto the Lord a new song. Shabbat Shalom. My friends, as always, you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on my face, which appears over there, or watch the last video I released by clicking on its icon right over there.